Jimmy. Jimmy. Hey, everybody. I am Jimmy Fallon. I am in for Greg Gutfeld. And I'd just like to say before we start, if you do like my jacket, it also comes in men's. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me watching at home, I am a former New York City cab driver, and the truth is I'm actually lucky to be alive because the driving in this town is psychotic. New York is the only city in the world where you signal after you've already made it into the next lane. <laughs> Anywhere else in America, if you want to go left, you put on your blinker like, hey, I'm going left. But if you do that here, they block you. <laughs> so instead, you have to go left, then you put on your blinker like, ha ha, I made it. <laughs> But the other thing you need to know about me is I grew up in an era where late night comedy was something the whole country could share. That's what life was in the 1980s. Every regular person could share late night and every celebrity could share Madonna. Um, <laughs> if you didn't laugh at that, it's because it burns when you pee, but stick with me. <laughs> so tonight what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to unite the country with some basic truths I think we should all be able to agree on. And I know not all of you are going to love it, but you need to remember these are just jokes. If you don't like something I say, you don't have to get angry and hold up the show. Uh, you can email me afterwards at kissmyass.com. Um, <laughs> because this is the thing. Nobody cares. Jokes aren't hate crimes. And we even learned that when Kathy Griffin showed us that horrible plastic face. And afterwards, she held up Trump's head afterwards. <laughs> Folks, the point is, comedy is supposed to be treated like a buffet. If you see a joke you like, you throw it on your tray. If you don't like the joke, you don't stop the line and argue with the chef like, oh, no, you didn't, you know what I mean? You move on to the next item, we all get our own tray. Because the truth is, it's not just comics. Everybody in the world is having a hard time with speech police. One of my best friends just moved over to London, and he was telling me the other day, you can't even call a wussy a wussy over there. You have to call them Prince Harry. <laughs> And of course, I bring up the royals. Why? Because they're a rare point of unity in our country. The truth is, whether you're black, white, Asian, Muslim, Latino, deep down, we all want the same thing, which is for Meghan Markle to shut the f up. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. But think about it. We're living in an America where 70% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck. Nobody wants to hear about the difficulties of being a princess, you tone-deaf idiot. So here's what I would say, Megster. If you're going to keep talking, at least make it interesting and do a true crime podcast about how you stole Prince Harry's balls. <laughs> and I'm just being honest with her, and I'm being honest with you, because nobody else will. Big tech censors the truth all the time. The White House hides everything. They said they'd be the most transparent administration in history, but please. Joe Biden thinks transparent is a man who has a baby. <laughs> Everybody in D.C., they just lie. They tell you student loan forgiveness is a thing, but the loans aren't forgiven. They're just passing the bill on to other people. And to be clear, I'm not even worried about paying for college, because my son is six foot five. He's getting a women's basketball scholarship. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, you guys are saving up for school. I'm saving up for a backboard and probably a little duct tape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, Link Man. But here is the deal. We're going soft in this country. Can't even beat your kids anymore, so they don't have to respect us. And I'm not telling you I want to beat my kid, but the fact that my kid knows I can't beat him is a problem. You dig? You ever get so mad at your kid, you wonder if you could survive in prison? <laughs> like, if I get through a month, I could smack this little bastard right here in Target. <laughs> and the whole concept that is so foreign to me, because I'm Italian, which means not only did I get beat as a kid, but my parents used weapons, okay? <laughs> Every Italian kid got beat with either a belt or a spoon. That's how it went down. And that wasn't the messed up part. The messed up part was you had to go get it for them. <laughs> Do you know how traumatic it is to go get an inanimate object that you know is going to destroy your life? It's the closest thing to buying an engagement ring, I can explain to you. <laughs> Jimmy, stomp it. My wife and I are actually married 16 years this year. 16 years. Oh, you got it. We're actually in an awkward spot, because the last three times we went to the grocery store, we ran into my high school girlfriend. Weird. Yeah, but it's going to change, because she's going to graduate. But, uh, stick with <laughs> Jimmy. But here's the thing, and I'm telling you this because I care. If someone invented a time machine, the best thing you could do for society would be to put today's kids in it and dial 1982. You know that? Kid would come walking out in someone's living room all sassy, complaining about everything. A VCR? I'm not watching a VCR, mommy. It takes all day. I am not watching. Some parent would just throw a shoe across the living room. Shut up, you know? 
Do you, is this like a, a symposium for abused kids? I'm sorry if that one hit home a little bit. <laughs> but do you remember when George Bush was your president? He was over in Iraq, someone threw a shoe at him and he dodged it. That's because he got beat as a kid. <laughs> That's what I learned in that moment. Barbara Bush was a shoe thrower back in the day. <laughs> 20 years from now, someone throws a shoe at the president, he's getting smoked because he won't know how to dodge it, you understand? <laughs> Except they won't throw a shoe, they'll throw a Snickers bar and he'll die of a peanut allergy. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is tough times call for tough measures. And if we're going to turn this country around, we need to dish out some tough love. And I know it sounds risky in an age of incentivized outrage, but I'm still all about it. Because the truth is, it takes balls for a man to get ahead in 2023. And if we're being honest, it takes balls for a woman, too. Period. Jimmy. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She is making her debut on the show, but don't worry, because when you talk about the best female comics in the country, she has watched all of them. Uh, comedian and problem drinker, my pal Allie Breen. There she is, Allie. She has spent more time completing other people's sentences than Jill Biden. Editor in chief of the Federalist, Molly Hemingway, in the house. There it is. He's dated so many guys, he's about to get transferred to another parish. Author of the book, <laughs> So You've Been Sent to Diversity Training, Chadwick Moore. Hey, girl. <laughs> She's like a nor'easter. People freak out 72 hours before she even shows up. Fox News contributor and author, Kat Timp. There it is, there it is, there it is. There it is. Chadwick, I'm going to start with you. You and I spend a lot of money to get spanked as adults. Yeah. But should we have been spanked more as kids? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I was, um, I, my mom smacked me with a bag of frozen waffles once when I was a kid. That was the best. <laughs> was I was hot. annoying the heck out of her, and she grabbed the nearest thing and whacked me on the butt with some frozen waffles. That was hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I agree that you need some more discipline. So are you the only guy who has egos in his search history, unlike you porn? Yeah, yeah. It really screwed <laughs> with me. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Kat, you wrote an amazing book about mm -hmm. Speech being equivalent of violence in the minds of some people. And I'm not just saying amazing because you gave me 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, stick with me, though, for real. Do you think there are people out there who don't know the difference between speech and violence? Or are people feigning ignorance because it comes with some type of political leverage? I think for, it depends. I think in a lot of cases it's because uh, it does come with the leverage. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're going to accuse somebody... Okay, so look, in my book, mm -hmm. you can't joke about that, available wherever books are sold. Um, <laughs> I talk about how, in another book, the Bible, mm -hmm. like one of the least chill books in there is Leviticus. That's like not a chill book. Mm -hmm. That's the eye for an eye. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're even stricter than Leviticus when it comes to jokes because nobody could honestly tell you that the worst thing that ever happened to them was hearing a joke that they didn't like. Yeah. But there'd be some people who would say that telling a joke that didn't go over well was the worst thing that happened to them. <laughs> so but, I think that, you know, we need to relax a little bit if the way we're handling it is stricter than Leviticus. Okay, I think that's fair. Uh, Allie, I have, I have to congratulate you on making it onto Gutfeld. Oh, Although this is you. like getting hired on Roseanne after Roseanne left. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the, uh, welcome to the Connors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you think social media is forcing the hand of some comics and that they're playing along with censorship because they want to brand well to bigger name comics in Hollywood who might like put them on a show or something. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's more that they want views and I think that these platforms will actually prevent them from getting views if they mm -hmm. use certain language or if they, you know, talk about certain subjects. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're definitely playing to that. Okay. And the bigger names, anyone who can get them anywhere, they're going to kiss up to. Is that what's going on? So is that your strategy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like No, I'd be way further ahead if that were my strategy. That's I'm funny. taking that strategy. <laughs> you wouldn't be on the Connors, you'd be on Real Roseanne. I yeah, think. exactly. Uh, Molly, am I just like a cranky old man uh, who needs to step aside for younger comedians like AOC? That would, yeah. she is, she's delightful. I love her. Um, but that's actually one of the things that's so problematic for me as a comedy viewer or mm -hmm. listener is it's so boring now. Yes. Like all of this safety makes for really unfunny shows. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I do, it makes me a little bit optimistic too that this, um, this horrible moment of speech policing that we're in yeah. makes really good comedy kind of go underground and more subversive and more It's fun. like a speakeasy. Exactly. It's like the untouchables, but instead of whiskey, they have like an open mic, you know, <laughs> that's funny. Well, I would say this, you can feel there's like a cultural tide shifting in the country in that we've identified the outrage mob by number. 
Like in the beginning of social media, I don't think we knew how many of them there were. So a lot of times we were getting them their way. Now that you realize it's like three guys, one blow up doll and a cat, you know, I think <laughs> comics are willing to give the finger now. Like Kat, would you say Dave Chappelle defunded the joke police by standing up? I think it's, yeah, I think because he can, it's really can't cancel somebody who's that rich. Yeah, yeah. But they, they are really loud and they'd say things like when they do say something like words or violence, uh -huh. then that shuts down the conversation because if you try to defend yourself at all, uh -huh. then that's just more proof in their minds that they're right. Yeah. And I really think that that's, it's, it is, we all know that it's such a small number of people yeah. that feel this way. But everybody, a lot of us are just too afraid of being canceled to actually say, Eh, I don't think that that's, you know, that errant comment is uh -huh. a, a summation of this entire person, not just as a bad person, but as an irredeemable person yeah. who's not welcome in society anymore. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I think that part's exhausting. It's like we're all running like a, a law firm in our head now, yeah. you know, where you have to vet every thought that comes out of your face and stuff. <laughs> like yeah. you're planning taco night, but you might get yelled at for cultural appropriation. Don't you think we're just tired? Also, who can keep track of which words you can and can't use anymore? People come out with these lists that are absurd. It's like you can't use uh -huh. Words like mother anymore, uh -huh. and you're you know home. Yeah. Like, what, what do I call you? It's <laughs> oh. it's crazy. It's gotten to a point where you know Ivy League colleges are putting out lists of words that you have to really think hard to figure out why they're even banning them. I mean, it's crazy. It's a weird time to be alive. But is that a sign then, Chadwick? Because the Oscars have started to like pivot back towards like mainstream America. Okay, yeah. there was some like little Jimmy Kimmel stuff where he took some shots. But there was also like an acknowledgement that Top Gun made a lot of money. Right. And like straight white people went to see it, straight gay people, but more importantly, <laughs> people who love America went to see it. So are the Oscars at least getting the message that they've kind of overstepped their bounds in terms of like bashing America? Uh, well, defund the joke, please. That was a good line, by the way. Oh, Chadwick Moore, thank you. I am going to compliment you. I'm like your main hoe right oh, now. Oh, Chadwick, you <laughs> spoiled me rotten girlfriend. Uh, yeah, I guess, but at the same time, it's like, okay, when Trump was president, not only Hollywood, comedy, the news media, anyone you can think of, went totally insane, scorched earth, uh -huh. ruined everything, Yes, went totally nuts, uh -huh. and now that they have Biden, they're a little placated. Okay. But as soon as another Republican gets in office, it's going to be the same thing. You think it's coming same with back? with Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, I think, like, now they're like, okay, now we can have the, uh, the American-loving straight white male <laughs> movie. Uh-huh. But if Trump gets back in office, no way. So you're telling me yeah. I have to watch an all-female Top Gun if Trump wins re-election? Well, hopefully. <laughs> like the yeah. female Ghostbusters? Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> um, but Molly, would you make an argument, as someone who consumes comedy, that Joe Biden's kind of wearing us out because he does so many stupid things, there's no shelf life? The idea that you could not make fun of this person. I know! <laughs> this vice president or, you know, uh -huh. the entire Democrat Party. Yeah, yeah. You have to be a failure to not be able to go after these. I mean, think about this. He shot down someone's high school science project. <laughs> really think about that as a people. When we were kids, the most absurd excuse you could ever give someone was the dog ate my homework. Yeah. Someone walked into an American classroom two weeks ago and was like, the president shot down my balloon, you know? And the teacher was like, holy hell, he's right. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's the part I think they're missing is, like, it's this golden age. It's, like, such fertile comedy. And I don't think we're mining it for any value. I know we're mining it for Percocet in the green room, Allie. <laughs> well, that's the most important. That's what we need. I, uh, I don't know why people aren't making fun of them more. It's like they make fun of themselves. That's the problem. It's almost so easy that people don't want to do it. You know, uh, Biden's falling upstairs and he's shaking hands with air. I feel like this crowd likes Biden. Are you guys pro-Biden <laughs> a little bit? You're like, lay off Joe. He's a nice guy. <laughs> Did you guys agree with Biden at the State of the Union when he said we have to choose between unity and schmuggada her Do you know that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was like, and I agreed with him on unity, but what a schmuck and a ha was the right way to go. Am I right? I feel like we missed an opportunity. Anyway, before we go, uh, come out and catch me on tour. I'm going to be in Bend, Oregon on April the 7th, Boise, Idaho on the 8th, and I'll swing by Bananas in East Rutherford, New Jersey, April 21st, 22nd. And then Kennedy and I are in Reading, Pennsylvania on May 6th. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.